on Warrior Games, a brutal and violent sport that comes close to tribal warfare. And after some tips and training, I'll take on some of the best players in this no hold barred game. But do I get a helmet? Do I get pads? Do I get anything? My name is Steve Sweetholt, and I'm from the Penalica tribe. I graduated high school at 19. I went back to school to become a journalist at 40. And now I tell stories, stories of warriors. I've traveled to the state of Mississippi into the heart of the Choctaw Nation. Every July, the community hosts the World Series of Stickball. This game has very few rules. In fact, in the past, players actually died during a match. Similar to our national game we know in Canada as lacrosse, stickball today is still rough, but a lot less dangerous. It's also the highlight of the Choctaw Indian Fair, when the community gathers to celebrate local heritage and traditions. There's dancing, music, and basket weaving, but nothing brings out the spirit of the Choctaw Nation more than stickball. Now it's time to get into the game we know as Little Brother of War. I'm here with James, Max, and Kyle, and they're gonna show me, well, what is this first of all? Well, Steve, this is our stickball sticks. In our language, we call kabocha. Kabocha. James Denson plays for the Beaver Dam team, and he's one of the top athletes in the Choctaw Nation. But this year he's coaching, not playing in the tournament because of a serious stickball injury. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting it. Stickball, well, I, I believe it's it, it's a culture to us, a tradition that I love playing, and yeah, it, it's something I want to continue doing. Uh, every which way you look, that's just the passion and tradition of who we are. I'll try to catch it. So this is one way of. Oh yeah, do I do I catch it with the, the, that? Yeah. And same way. There we go. <laughs> Release. You did pretty good, especially leading with your right hand. Good job. Good catch. <laughs> this is like very exciting for me. Exactly. Things we can't do. You can't hit below the knees. So no below the knees. No hitting below the knees. So that would mean like with your sticks, you can't hit below the knees or do you just like body? If, if you're running to tackle, you just can't it's go. It's got to be around the waist. Around the waist at gotcha. least. No horse collaring, no, no clothes lining. Horse collaring mean like coming behind and or, or grabbing. Oh, pulling down. OK. Is anybody well. taking a blow to the head by an elbow? Hands up, please. Yeah, me too. I've been there. Not fun. Long time ago, this was pretty much, uh, I guess, badlands, lands that you know the uh, newcomers didn't want, and this is the land that we settled in because we're situated near swamps, and we made do with what we had, and this is where we, you know, grew up. Stickball in our language we call it kabocha, and the sticks are made out of hickory. Because hickory is the only hardwood that can bend when it's young, when it's uh, freshly cut and then hardens as it dries up, and it keeps the form of this cup. See this cup? Length, really nice. Um, the weight, pretty much evenly distributed. So, uh, really nice sticks. I'd like to have them. <laughs> and the ball in the old days, uh, it was made out of deer hides, deer cloths. Uh, cow hides, but now in modern day we got industrialized leather that we use, which is pretty easy to get. Walmart, <laughs> nowadays. This is inside here, <laughs> it never turns out perfect, but the more I work at it, the better it gets. The community level support for, for stickball is immense. They had people traveling across states, state lines to come in and participate and support their teams and their sons and their daughters who are playing on these teams. 
the intensity with the, within the family uh, circles there is very, very supportive. The energy that goes into stickball, I think, uh, comes from community pride. Long time ago, before we had rules, you know, everything pretty much went. It was basically a no holds barred. If you had the ball in your cup like this, you're a free game. We used to have several hundreds of players on opposing sides. So at any given time, we used to have maybe 500 players on the field at once playing. But now, our modern game, we have uh, 30 players on opposing sides. So that would make it 60, 60 players on the field at once. Imagine the whole football field going after this one little bitty ball. Let's work on coming over our shoulders, over the head, leading with the right hand. Okay, got it. Aim at the top of the pole. Get an early release on it, too. Early See what release. it does. Early release. There we go. Oh. We're getting some height on it now. Yeah. Ah. And aim at the top of the pole. Top of the pole, top of the pole, top of the pole. There we go. Oh! oh. We almost got it. I think yeah. we're getting there. Oops. <laughs> Steve. Touchdown. This is why I considered you playing the defensive position. Get aggressive. Okay. It's nothing but you in the pole. There yeah. we go. We'll count that. Do you see that? Huh? Stevie's got talent. All right, we'll get too cocky. It's called Little Brother of War for a uh, reason is uh, they, to dispute over land or, or any grievances they have, they settle it out on a field where uh, that's why it's considered Little Brother of War because they didn't have to go into battle. The dis disputes were settled on the field. It's a very colorful sport. But colorful because th there's a lot of blood in the game because your fingers are going to get cut, head, everything, your nose. The officials like to clean up most of the blood just to try to keep it as clean as possible. I got a gash in my head with eight stitches. Messed up my knee, blew out my knee. Elbows. People get concussions. Knuckles. Messed up my uh, fingers. Separate your shoulder. I've even lost my tooth. Play every year, after injury after injuries. Broken bones. Still play. It's in your heart. We get out there and uh, accidental or not, you know, we do tend to have a, you know, a part where blood is part of the sport. Today on Warrior Games, I've traveled from my home territory of Penalcott Island near Victoria, Canada to Choctaw, Mississippi to try out the game of stickball. Usually tackling is going to take a lot of expenditure of your energy. Right. We're going to have Zeke come in on the run, pick up the ball, and you're going to have Momo coming in for the kill. Okay. <laughs> for the kill. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Take her away, guys. Momo and Zeke, make us proud. <laughs> good clean head, good clean head, Steve. Catch him, Steve, come on. Good tackle. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, this game is really, really hard, really hard. I don't want to get tackled. <laughs> okay, so for me, now that you've seen what I can do, sort of, where do you think I would best belong? I guess I'd, I'd have to put you at defense. Oh, I was thinking I'd be a natural goal scorer. But that's okay. No, you Maybe later. We'll, we'll, we'll see. You, you made a good tackle earlier, so. There's hope. Uh, th there's hope there. All right. With my friends, and it feels like a family when I'm with my team. Let's go, 
some players, they can hit really hard, especially the big ones. I don't feel bad. This is part of the game. I just get back up and start playing. It's part of our culture and our tradition, and it's fun. MJ and Jill. Being a goalie, protecting this, tell me why that's so important. You got to protect the other people from scoring. Look at this. Takes another shot, but missed. Your job is to stop the ball that's coming at 90 miles an hour into this post. OK, so how do you protect the post? Well, you protect the post for the other, uh, other teams for not scoring. OK. You got to protect it. OK. We go like this? No. Take your stick up. How's that? Is that right? Go like this. Oh, OK. And then Hold on. put it back. Oh, OK. So like, keep these together. OK, Jill, MJ, I feel kind of vulnerable like this. And the ball's coming at me 100 miles an hour. And my natural instinct is, I'm, as a man is to protect myself in certain places. What do you do? Whenever the ball's hitting towards you, just have your sticks down. So just give it a little swat. Mm -hmm. I feel like Luke Skywalker. It looks like you got a stall. <laughs> <laughs> and is this OK side by side? Does that give you wider? Because yeah. it is a wide. It's, it's not bad. I mean, that's, that's not bad to swat that little ball. And the ball is only like this. Intimidation, of course, is part of the game. What kind of a face do you get? You're smiling when the ball is coming at you? Or what, what, you what's give, your face like? You give your mean look. Your mean look? OK, let me, let's see your mean look. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's my mean look. A goaltender needs to be a man and ready to take whatever comes at him because it's going to always come at him. It's time for me to beat goalie. Bring it on. I'm going to score all over you. I'm so bigger than you. You can't take me then. Bring it on. <laughs> I don't like this position. Show me something. <laughs> yeah. Am I getting the hang of this? Am I doing good, girls? Where's my girls? Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. No, oh, they scored. They scored. They scored. Yes. Yes! You can't score on me. <laughs> See? Oh, I guess he did. E! <laughs> That's close. That was for a watch out. All right, Steve. Yeah. What you want to do is be ready, because once the ball goes up in the air, you're going to go and try to jump, catch the ball, or okay. try to hit it out. Okay. But you're going to have a good bit of people coming in doing the same thing. OK. I'm ready, man. Get in there, Steve. Let's go. Get up. Here we go. Get in there, Steve. <laughs> Get in there, Steve. Let's go. Where'd it go? <laughs> Steve, do you have good insurance? <laughs> no, I don't. Get him. Oh. Hey, come on. <laughs> we'll give you that. <laughs> now what do I do? Shoot it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Where'd it go? He's got it. <laughs> All right, Steve, you got to run around. Okay. You got to run around. Go make a tackle. Go make a tackle. Go make a tackle. Oh, oh. what a shot. That's a score. So don't watch him. Don't watch him. <laughs> Go after him. What's the oldest guy here? Oldest guy, hands up. How old are you, brother? 48. I don't have no excuses then. I'm 47. No, I'm 46. 48. Hey, way to go, yeah, brother. Yeah. I'm a rock star, man. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Go after Steve. Come on. Come on, Steve. Come on. Get in there. Get back in there. 
Get back in there. Oh, put that cup around. Go, go, here we go. Let's go, Steve. <laughs> come on, come on, get in there, get in there, get in there. Get in there, come on, come on. Let's go. <laughs> gotta get it, gotta get it. Now, you gotta hit the pole at least. Oh. Ah, we'll take hit that. The pole. <laughs> If it hits the pole, it counts as a score, so we'll take Where's it. my team? Right Give here. Some love. That's some perfect, perfect block, perfect block. <laughs> I know you guys would smoke people. <laughs> Coming up, feeling the heartbeat of a warrior. The sound you hear behind me is a heartbeat. 60 beats per minute, the pumping rhythm of players getting ready to play stickball. More than 100 years ago, players had various rituals like dancing around a fire or bathing in a creek. Some actually greased themselves up so they couldn't be tackled by their opponent. Anything for a slight advantage in the game they call Little Brother of War. time it actually feels like I'm going into combat. Very intense, very intriguing. Here we go. Yes. Blessed with the sticks. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Look at that. That means everything. Got my own sticks. Now I'm ready. I think the feeling that I've got being with over 100 people ready to prepare for almost like war is very intense, very moving, and very nerve-wracking at the same time. Still nervous, still apprehensive. I like to get them just all fired up for this game. Even before the game, you just you can see the intensity from teams before you step on the field. So to have that adrenaline in going into the game is, is something you definitely want to have. They're let out by the drummer and they're kind of trying to increase the sound of the drum by just going in pace with it. And it's an intimidation factor, just making it seem like a huge crowd is coming. And it's just like how I would imagine back in the days when the wars, when they were coming out, and they come out hollering. OK, I feel like I'm going out. I'm going to play. And hopefully I get hurt. I'm sending positive vibes to my teammates. And I'm out on the field. Look where I'm at. Look where I'm at. We gotta pick it up even more. We're not where we need to be. I usually like getting out there just to excite the players, get them going. I'm telling you, Dan, this team's gonna be hungry. Get the team pumped up and ready to play this tournament. They are gonna be coming for us. Y'all wake up, get ready. We practiced for this so long, you don't wanna go in a losing end. No team wants to, wants to do that. Seriously, man, we gotta start thinking about it right now. We gotta play now. Thursday, come on, man. Let's go! Oh! So how do you guys know when your guys are going in? Just sub off? Six, one, seven, 48, 49, 30. Winning 3 nothing. We're kicking butt. And yes, I am a lucky charm. As I watch the players battle it out on the field, my own heart races at the thought of entering into the fray. But suddenly, it all comes to an abrupt end because Beaver Dam is up seven to nothing. The mercy rule comes into play and the game is over. Maybe it's just as well. 
I wasn't quite ready to shed blood. And it wasn't like I didn't take my share of hits. Time to head home to Canada, a little more bruised and a lot more humbled. Go, oh, here we go! <laughs> I'm gonna get him! <laughs> Ow. But for the Choctaw, it's less about the blood that spilled than the blood that shared. At the end of the day, you know, you go out there to play this game for what it is, the tradition behind it. It can bring families together and it brings pride to whichever community that wins bragging rights for a whole year. I have never in my 29 years of playing and 14 years of officiating, I have never heard anybody complain about money. In the real world, everybody's worried about money, but this is a, totally about pride. You know, when they line up to get their money, they walk off. They don't want it. It's all about pride, and I'm proud of that. This is a true American Indian game, but the fact is, this belongs to the Choctaw Nation, no doubt about it. In this area, very prideful game. One, two, three, put it out! I need a piece of the pizza. Hey, oh, it's... <laughs> I don't want to scare anybody away. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I think that was pretty good. I was snorting too. <laughs>